thank you all for coming to my senior recital. I'm a music technology student at UNF, and I'm supposed to say that. Um, so today I'll be performing a few works from the 1970s, 80s, as well as a few compositions of my own. The first being a composition I wrote in 2017 to 2018 when I was first getting into the, the school at UNF. And it's got sort of a video game theme to it, so I called it Above the City. And it's something I produced using the program Logic Pro X, which is a digital audio workstation that you put on your computer so that you can record, create, and mix any music that you'd like to. So the way that I created it was through this MIDI controller here, which is a type of keyboard that doesn't produce its own sound. But the benefit of that is all of these dials, buttons, and various pitch wheels can be mapped or put to any purpose that I'd like it to. So that's kind of a plus to it. So I use this MIDI controller to produce all the sounds that you're going to hear in all of these songs. And so here's my first piece above the city. strange matchup comes from 
a tech ensemble audition that I did a few years back and we were given a small sample of sheet music and it turned out to be from Mozart. So given us this melody, he asked us to record, create, mix, remix, anything that we could using that little sheet of music. And so I used it as an opportunity to mash up between one of the pieces that he previously arranged the semester beforehand. So I combined the two into something that sort of fits together. So I'll play you my examples of what you'll hear here, so. First, I'll play you the Mozart Symphony number 40, so you'll understand what that sounds like. semesters before.
messages from Mr. Eddie Van Halen, who sadly passed away last year. But this is from his song, this is his song, Jump. And I originally played it with the UNF Tech Ensemble a few years ago in their 1980s themed concert. And so I'm gonna be using the same synth sound that I had during then, which is a recreation of the OBX synthesizer that was used on the original recording. And I had one of my friends, Robbie Lee, play guitar for me on this piece, as well as a few others that you're going to hear. And um, I recorded the bass, recorded the drums through the MIDI controller here, and sang. So here's Jump. Oh, and another thing is what's cool about some of these pieces is that I could program one of these extra pedals to play the song for me, my backing track so that I don't have to mess with anything and I can just keep playing. So it works like, like that. So here's jump.
this <clears throat> I think I'm gonna uh, change up the order a little bit because of the computer. So for the next piece, I'm going to explain horror, which was an assignment given to me during Halloween a few years ago, and it was in my electronic music productions course. So what we had to do was create a piece three to five minutes long that sets a horror soundscape, and it sounds like you know you would hear a soundtrack in a horror movie. One of the extra challenges of this was to bring in an unconventional object or instrument and make it sound scary and do a whole bunch of effects to, to it. So I chose at the time a domra, which is a Russian folk instrument that I had access to because I was in the UNF Ball Laika Orchestra, which nobody thought I would join, but I did. <laughs> and, uh, so I'll play you what the Domra sounds like inside of the piece so that you know which part of that was my unconventional instrument. space and so one of the challenges I put on myself for this assignment was to make something that's really not scary by itself into something a little bit more creepy so you're gonna hear some clips of dialogue from Spongebob Go. so here's the piece for
this next piece is from the from the electronic pop duo Daft Punk, who sadly just retired in February, and they're they're the duo that have made a lot of electronic things popular, such as Coachella and having these big performances with laser lights and all that kind of stuff. Another thing that they've really brought into popular music a lot is vocoders, which I'm going to be using today. So I'm going to be using this Mini Nova synthesizer as a vocoder. And if you're not sure what a vocoder is, it's a it's a type of synthesizer that needs two signals to work. It needs a synthesis engine like this, as well as uh, something like a voice or some other audio being played into it. So that's it's called two things. It's called the modulator and the carrier signal. The modulator is my voice going into the microphone, and then the carrier signal is the synthesizer, which produces the cool effect. So by themselves, they don't do anything, really. I can speak into the microphone without pressing a key. Nothing happens. But if I press a key, and so it produces a cool effect. So Daft Punk have created a number of songs using the vocoder, so I'm going to be playing one of their more popular ones called Doing It Right. Thank you. 
for these next few pieces. Um, the first combination is Foreplay and Smokin', which are two songs from Boston, the rock band that was popular during the 70s and 80s. And these two songs were written by Tom Schultz, who is the main guitarist, keyboardist, guy who basically wrote the entire first album by himself in his basement. And I chose both of those pieces because they really show off organ playing, and so this is fitting for kind of a keyboardist recital. So um, then the next song, Africa, is you know from Toto, and they're a pretty cool 1980s band. They have a lot of interesting chord changes and lyrics, and they're very cool. So. Um, Eliza is going to be accompanying me on Smokin' and Africa, so I would introduce her beforehand because foreplay runs into Smokin' as a combination. So, first, here's foreplay. Get 
Basically, it looks like this little calculator type thing, and what you do with it is you program, sequence, and sample music through it. So, this is called a pocket operator, and what I've done here is I've made samples of audio and then put them into here, and then I've programmed them into patterns, and then I'm able to sequence them however I like. So. If I made like this pattern right here, so I can play this pattern that I made here and it will continuously loop itself. As you can hear, it just started again. But This is what the first one that I made sounded like, and that's with drums and bass. Just, with, just bass and synth then. And then I brought in a drum on a separate pattern that I made, so it sounds like this. together, that's how most songs are made, through those little samples and loops. So you can put it all together, and then it'll sound like a full song. So I'll sequence them all together right now, and then you'll see me press some buttons uh, near the end, and then those are some effects, like stutter effects, where it sort of slices the audio, or record scratches, or pitches up and down to provide some variation.
original composition of mine for electronic music's productions course that I was taking at UNF, and the goal was to write a full song using lyrics, and this was my first one writing a song with lyrics. And it was originally for a competition that you'd send online to Nashville to get it possibly recorded at a studio. Although I didn't compete in the competition, it was still a grade, so <laughs> here's, a, here's my original song, Final Lap, which is inspired by racing game stuff. together with two hands because it's harder and cooler. <laughs> so. <laughs> 